As we begin what we have been uh, rolling for some days now, I just want to read a portion of scripture in the book of Proverbs chapter number 16 and verse number 20, the word of the Lord says, those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who trust the Lord will be joyful. Those who trust in the Lord will be joyful. If you listen to instruction, you will prosper. Uh, some people cannot instruct because they have never been instructed. If you despise instruction, if you cannot be taught, you cannot teach others. If you cannot sit under someone who can teach you. And this the problem that even many couples have because they are, they, they, you can be married to a woman who has never received an authority of her father. She was brought up by uh, a, just a single parent, mom. Uh, of, of course, there are people that have gone through that process. So they, they have never encountered an authority of her father. They have never had someone telling them this is the way to go. And now, if they cannot change their attitude and these, uh, the same people go into marriage with the same mind, they will wonder, a man telling me what? I've, I've, I've never been authorized by a man. If there's any man who authorized me either, maybe a teacher or maybe uh, a lecturer somewhere in a college, but when it comes to my personal life, how, how can somebody begin to just give me some directives here and there? So uh, if, if, if you are brought up, please, uh, I just want to give you an advice. If you are brought up by your mom only, you, 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 you never experienced the directives or the instructions of our father, please, I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ, you need to change your mind. You need to change your attitude. Because if you go with the same attitude in the, in the, in the marriage institution, you will be in trouble. You may be married by the best man ever, but because you cannot, you, 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 you are never instructed. So you cannot be instructed even by the man that you call your husband. It requires someone who has been instructed to submit to an instruction. And if you cannot be instructed, you cannot instruct. If you have never been taught, you can never teach. And uh, this is something that is eating up many, many, uh, many uh, couples, and especially when it comes to the, uh, on the side of, uh, of, uh, of, of women, uh, especially who never uh, got an authority, I mean an opportunity to be, uh, uh, to be under a father, or you, you, you end a father, but he was a passive father. He, just, he was just passive. He neglected everything, and it's like every, every direction, every instruction came from your mother. So when, when you meet any man, you treat, uh, you treat men like the way you, you, you could treat your, your, your own dad because he was an irresponsible dad. You need to change that attitude, and when you do that, uh, you will be a good wife. You need uh, if, if, if you can al allow God to help you, if you can just know where you belong, if you can understand the mandate, why I came to this marriage, it is because of MBCD, you will not be forced to take care of your husband. And the funny thing, the marriage is a funny institution, and to those who even uh, have, have married uh, in a legal way, you are given certificate. Most of them, they are given certificate even before they go through the process of marriage. So I think even that, that certificate makes many people to feel that they have, they have arrived and they don't understand that they have been trusted with something that they are supposed to pay for. So please, I, I beg you, if you're a woman, you're out there, understand your office, understand your mandate, understand where you belong and be effective. Be effective as a woman and do what you're supposed to do as a woman and you will not regret. You will not regret. There are some women, even they, 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 they don't know by people who do not know God, but they know now to, to, to submit and tame their husbands. 
And these husbands, some of them, they are very drunk, they are drunkard. And when they come home, even if they were, they were singing some bad songs before they, they enter into their gates, they are very cool because they know uh, they, they are going into a place where there is a noble woman. A noble woman who, who is able to tame this man, who, who does not confront this man, who does not compete with this man, who does not co uh, uh, abuse or, or disregard the authority of this man. And this man, when he comes home, he is drunk, but is a, a man who is committed. Why there's a woman who is able to tune this, this husband and the husband sings to, uh, to the tune of, of, of this woman. Now he said the, the problems uh, that is making many people uh, fail to take care of each other. I want just to mention point by point so that we can go directly to uh, what we are supposed to do today. We got to know that if you allow your love to grow cold, your love to grow cold, it will be very difficult to take care of one another. So, in other words, you should always make sure that you are doing something for your love to grow. You should cultivate uh, for you, that love to be maintained, for that love to grow, for the warmth of the love to be always uh, in, in between you. Because lovers, they always take care of each other. People who love one another, they are concerned. But whenever your love grows cold or some of them, even the love dies completely you say i don't feel him anymore i i i i, I don't i don't i don't i don't feel this man anymore i don't feel this woman anymore so you disconnect yourself that person uh life can be messed up and nothing is happening because you are just giving you just you, you become very passive you are you are you are no longer concerned and it's it's not your responsibility anymore yeah and this is something that is killing many couples and life has become very hard number two we understood when you fail to uh compass and cliff as a woman you should compass as a man you should cliff to your wife and uh when both of you you are operational it becomes very easy you become very sensitive to whatever is disturbing your, your, your spouse. If he's not well, you feel it, you sense it. If she's not well, you feel it, you sense it because you are a system that is functioning. A system that is not functioning, it is a, a system that can always crash any time. And some systems in, in, in couples, their senses, their, 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 their minds, everything, when it comes to uh, their marriage issues, they have allowed those things to fail. And please, I'm begging in the name of the Lord, do your part. Let uh, everyone do his part and you will be excited when you are living together. You'll never be bored. You'll never get uh, to be bored by your husband, by your wife, because this person is you. You are just one person. Failure to take care of each other. It's, it, it's as if you have a, a one part of your body that nerves are dead. If, if, if you have a, para, a, a paralyzed heart or leg, or if one, if one um, side of your, of your body is paralyzed, you don't feel it, you don't sense it. And this is what is happening in many couples. The nerves that sense some things that uh, couples should sense, those nerves are dead. And whenever the nerves are dead, even if that part is cut off, you can't feel it. That is why some people even separating, even leaving the other person uh, struggling, it is not an issue to them because uh, it's as if it, it's a part that is paralyzed. Then we understood also when we fail to uh, embrace unity. If unity fails, uh, still that will bring an issue in, 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 in couples, you in just... Uh, where there's division, there's no cooperation, there's, there's no togetherness. And uh, this becomes an entrance even of blessings. Uh, we, we got to know in Psalm 133 that God commands blessing where there's unity. And uh, this unity has made many couples not to be interested at all, not to take care of one another because you are speaking, is uh, you are seeing uh, your path towards east, the other one is seeing is our path towards west. You are focused on north, the other one is south. You are discussing this, you are seeing this vision, the other one is bringing another different vision. And all these things bring collision. And where there is collision, there is confusion and darkness covers 
the minds of people when you allow uh, unity to fail. We also got to understand when we we fail to be humble. We we allow pride. When humility fails, pride takes over. And uh, whenever pride uh, pride takes over, then God resists anybody who is proud. And we have families that are being resistant. People are very busy praying and fasting, rebuking demons and uh, casting out demons and uh, trying to do all those manner of things. But the, the Lord is in, 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 in operation. He is the one who is resisting because uh, he resists the proud and gives more grace to the humble. And also we understood number five, when you feel you are doing more than your partner. If you feel you are doing more than your partner, I'm the one who is supplying, I'm the one who is doing this, I'm the one who is paying bills, I'm the one who is earning, I'm the one who is uh, hustling. To those who uh, like to use that word, and to, if you are a Christian, there are some ones you are not supposed to invite in your life. If you know who you are in Christ, there are some ones that you should not invite. So when you feel you are doing more than your spouse. I'm doing more than my wife. My wife is always at home. I'm the one who is working. My husband uh, is not working. I'm the one who is working. And you are, you feel that you, some people withdraw even their support. Some people withdraw even what they're supposed to do. And they, they it's like they, they feel more of themselves, more than uh, uh, how they are supposed to, to feel. And this has really become a poison. It has become uh, something that is hindering many couples and they are struggling and they are asking themselves a lot of questions, uh, but we are answering. Don't allow yourself, even if uh, you are the one who is applying. Thank God, because that is a season that the Lord has just opened doors uh, and is using you to be a, a, a point of contact for his blessings to rest in your, in your marriage. So if God uh, uses you as a door in this season, uh, you become that opening, that channel, being grateful to God, be thankful to God, and don't despise your partner because there is nothing that is happening through him or through her. And when you do that, I tell you the truth, you will never fail to do what you're supposed to do in the life of your partner. And your partner will always remain grateful to God because of your life. I, I, I would like you to ask your, uh, yourself a question. Maybe you are a couple, you are together. But you can ask yourself a question. Is my husband, can he go before God and tell God, thank you God because of this wife that he gave unto me? Can your wife go before the Lord and tell the Lord, thank you God because of this woman that he gave unto me? Because of how you are doing things, because of how you are taking care of him or her, because of how, you are, how he or she is handling you even during the uh, trying moments. That is a question that you are supposed to answer and the Lord will bless you if you can answer it very well by your actions. Understand action speaks louder than once. Uh, number six, when you fail uh, to, when, when you move away from your marriage vision, every marriage should have a vision. And uh, if, if you fail to have a vision, that marriage can die any time. A marriage that does not have a vision can end any time. If you don't have a vision, uh, you can you can exit the world anytime. Because what keeps us, it is the vision. What keeps us is the dream. That is why Joseph never never died. His brothers wanted to kill him. They 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 changed that. They threw him in, 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 into a, a pit. Still, God came in because he had a dream. He, he was taken to the to the to the to the market. He was sold as a slave. Uh, he learned to put first house. He works there. He lands to the prison. He, he still he continues. But what was keeping him? The vision. If you have the vision, it doesn't matter the process. It doesn't matter the route that you go through. Uh, finally, you arrive at your destination and you look back and say, oh, truly, this is the dream of God. I believe the day Joseph got into power and when he could look back, he was glorifying God. And that's why when God gave him an opportunity in, I believe it's in Genesis chapter number 50, when he encountered his brothers and uh, his brothers, they were fearful. They, they thought that Joseph uh, would maybe revenge. He told them, you, you decided, you were planning to do me evil, but God 
was planning to do me good, even to save many lives. I want to tell you, if you have a vision, every vision goes through a process. A vision goes through a process. That's why God told Abakuk in chapter number two of the book of Abakuk, write the vision so that you run will read the vision and run the, with the vision. So you, the vision of your marriage should be written with um, bold letters that whoever go, runs, whoever comes into contact with you, you will know what you live for, what you stand for. They, they will know these are a couple and they are focused. They are not trying to live together. They are not rehearsing to see if this marriage will work. They are sure that this is a god ordained marriage. And this is what we are supposed to do as Couples, as people who know God, as people who fear God, you may go through a, a period that it's not a good one. But I want to tell you that period should not crush you. That period should make you better people in Jesus' mighty name. Number seven, we understood when you get a position and support from somewhere else, that is away from your spouse. If you are appreciated more somewhere else, you are your wife, you are meeting a man somewhere, a colleague a um, businessman somewhere, a businesswoman that you're interacting with, there's a man and this person appreciates you, this person gives you some gift, even some family members, they appreciate your wife more than you appreciate, they give gift and you've never thought of giving your wife a gift, then a heart will be stolen. The heart of your husband will be stolen. Where, where appreciation and where the flow of um, good things are coming, this can make some people, even their love, to be challenged. And uh, we said we, we should not uh, entertain that. We should not uh, take that as a privilege and you just embrace it because it is a problem that can really challenge your marriage life and it can challenge your love life. Number eight, we understood when uh, you begin to look down on your partner, you look down on your husband, you talk and you just brag and you, 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 you look down on him, you look down on your wife, this can cause many things that we talked uh, and uh, it can really paralyze our marriage, it can cause discontentment and you can feel as if this this not the, the right person to, to have as my husband, this is not the right person to have as, as my wife and this has also caused many people not to take care of each other because someone that you look down on, you cannot uh, concern yourself in the matters that concerns this person and this should be dealt with, should be fought by every means possible to make sure that even if the other person has gone through the, the times or seasons of being in a low moment, you don't look down on him or her. Even if you are elevated more than your partner, maybe in great doors, great opportunities have come through you, you should not look down on your partner. I believe you married that person and the vision or the plan, the purpose was one. Uh, this is the person that I will spend the rest of my days with. So some people, they begin to look down on each other because even uh, you can fail to upgrade or to encourage your, your, your spouse even to upgrade him, uh, himself or herself. And you, you can feel as if uh, this is not the right person to be with. And uh, this, uh, it is something that can be worked on. And where there is love, love will always cover a multitude of many, many things that uh, may bring sin. And uh, our last program, part four, we dealt with unforgiveness. And uh, I want to tell us that this is something that is killing many, many couples. Many people are wounded. Many people, uh, their prayers are not answered. Uh, many people, they are not progressing in life because of unforgiveness. They are carrying unnecessary pregnancies in their heart because of things that they have gone through. They have taken each other through some uh, tough moments. What you, you, have, you told your wife, what you spoke to your, to your husband, still he or she is harboring or people are harboring those evils in their heart and God has no place in the hearts of people. And uh, I, I just beg each one of us because hell is real and paradise is real. And uh, it, is, it is unfortunate if you can hold on to 
a certain thing that you are told by your husband, you still up to now you have not forgiven or anybody out there who was used in your life and you have not forgiven them, let me tell you, uh, that is something very dangerous because if you can't forgive, God cannot forgive you. If you cannot forgive, it is difficult. You are telling God, I am, I am not uh, uh, the right candidate of forgiveness. So you are supposed to forgive so that God uh, will forgive you. And uh, uh, it is something that we are supposed to embrace. Uh, I want to hand over to my <laughs> dear here so that you will maybe that's where we are supposed to to go next and the Lord will bless us. You are most welcome, City. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, amen. Uh, God bless you. Amen. God continue amen. to do you good. Amen, amen. Uh, we are see. getting blessed. This is Divine Marriage Program Online. And uh, please, uh, we, we encourage you to keep on sharing the information with your friends and uh, we will be blessed uh, when uh, you do that. Uh, tonight we are still speaking about taking care of each other and we are in part four, part five. Yes. Uh, we dealt with part four. Mm. Part uh, five is now uh, moving on and uh, I want us to look at uh, number ten, why people are not taking care of each other. Uh, yes. What is happening? Number ten. And... This is a fresh for today. Uh, people will not take care of each other when you cause your spouse to malfunction. When you cause your spouse to malfunction. Mm. So in other words, you married a, a functioning man and you have managed to make him unfunctioning. You married a functioning woman, but in your hands, this woman turned into something else. She is no longer functioning. Mm. And it is very easy for a couple to be in a marriage and turn each other into something else. Yeah. Very easy. You can easily cause your husband to malfunction. You can also cause your wife to malfunction. And that is where many people are. You married a king. You married a man who stands on four pillars. Ma, the king. Ma, the mentor or the elder. Man, the, the hunter or the fighter. Man, the friend or a lover. And in course of your stay in marriage, you manage to cut off one or two pillars or all of them. This man went down and he fell. And therefore, you want to see a king you killed. You want to see a fighter to fight and protect. You killed. You want to see a friend and a lover to love you, to love your children and to be a friend to you. You killed. You want to see a, 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 a mentor, mentoring, training and taking your children to the life that they are supposed to go through, you killed. So what you have is something that has collapsed. It's an imitation. <laughs> so it is, it is not really the man that you wanted to have. And that is why some are saying, this is not what I wanted. This is not the man that I married. This is not the woman that I married. For sure, some people in marriage, they are different. The story we hear, some people say, my husband was very good the first one year, two years, three years of marriage. First years of marriage.
first 10 years of marriage, I really enjoyed it. But from there, I don't know what happened. What happened. My, 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 my life turned around. My life changed. It's life I cannot explain. I cannot describe what really went wrong. Mm -hmm. Maybe the king was killed. Maybe the mentor was destroyed. Maybe the friend does not live with that man anymore. Maybe the fighter died. He does not fight anything. Anything that comes is okay. Anything that comes in that room, it is okay. The man does not fight it. Because the fight, fighting energy, even he tells you, I don't have energy to fight. Even you, yourself. <laughs> you bring some issues and the man says, I don't have energy. Oh God. Hmm? You bring some issues and say, I don't have energy for this. And he leaves you. You say, come, tell me what you want. The man does not talk. Say, go. Say, I don't have, I don't have energy for all your quarrels now. I am not ready for all your comments this day. I am not ready for your acting. That's the wife now being told by the husband. Say, am I an actor? Am I doing this? Come on, you must. You must be a man. You must be this. <clears throat> so you are challenging him to be a man. And the man name cannot stand because the pillar are cut. And therefore, he has become something else. How do we do that? Because some women are wondering, as the apostle, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are accusing us and you are taking us in the wrong direction. Simple. Simple. And very simple. When you deny him respect. Mm. So man is created. And I keep on repeating this and I like to repeat it until you get it. Man is created to serve a certain purpose. His purpose determines his nature and his nature determines his needs. So the nature of man determines the means and the nature is determined by the purpose. A man is created to serve a purpose. The same case to the woman. But now, what is the need? The need is what you require to function. So how do we cause each other to malfunction? You deny the needs. Yeah. You take away the needs. Mm. So once you take away the needs, you cause the man or the woman to malfunction. So a man cannot function without some things. And a woman cannot function without some things. That's the means. So without the means or without that need provided, that man will never function. And therefore, you need to understand that. Then... Some people make it not intentional, but they assume assumption is the killer of many things. They assume that as they provide what they want, or they provide their wants, that they are fulfilling the need. So, what is happening? Every woman is fighting to make a man look like him, like God. You, you are fighting the differences, those differences that we have. So you want the needs of a woman to be the needs of a man, and a man, the needs of a man to be the needs of a woman. And God created us differently. The need of a man is not the need of the woman, and the need of the woman is not the need of man. Yeah. So in marriage, we come with a wrong aim or a wrong purpose. We want to turn that man to be like us. You want to turn that woman to be like you. So once this mistake is done in marriage, your focus changes. You want to do things to a man the way you would like it to be done for you. And that is where frustration comes. So I always state and want to remind you that the need of a male are different from that of a female. We need different things. So, a male needs different things from the female. 
So the male is expected to understand the needs of the female and vice versa so that each, each of them will function in a marriage. So if you don't understand the need of this man and provide the need of this man or don't understand the need of this woman and provide the needs of this woman, then you will force each other to malfunction in that marriage. Mm. So in other words, it will not work. If it is not functioning, it is not functioning. Yeah. If it is not working, it is not working. Now, for you now to be happy, you must take the need of each other as primary importance.